coming up on BYU Basketball with Dave Rose. The Cougs are cruising five straight wins and now back home after last week's road sweep. We're breaking it all down with Coach Rose, Colby Lee, and Evan Troy as BYU Basketball with Dave Rose starts now. Inside, eight scores for two seconds. It is all over. Jimmer from 40 feet. I'm really happy for the guys because of the feel that we're playing with right now. It seems like they got a lot of confidence. TJ drives, cuffs it, scoops it, and scores it! Three and they roll, low to Baxter, Baxter spin, oh, Baxter top. The spin around Scott! Straight away Zach, three, he got it! He can't miss! This is BYU Basketball with Dave Rose, presented by Siegfried and Jensen. Live from Studio C in Provo, Utah, with your host, the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Well, good evening, BYU basketball fans. Once again, welcome back inside the BYU Broadcasting Building in Provo. It is our weekly visit with Coach Rose for a weekly hour-long look inside Cougar basketball right here on BYU TV and BYU Radio. We invite you to take part in tonight's show on social media. Use the hashtag Rose Show on Twitter or the BYU TV Sports Facebook and Instagram accounts to get questions in for Coach Rose or tonight's guests. We'll have Q&A coming up later on in the show. Joined on our on-court set by the head coach of the Cougars, Dave Rose. And Coach Rose, a great time of the year to be playing well. And you guys are. Yeah, and our guys are playing really well. You know, it's interesting. You watch the highlights, uh, and there's highlights in every game. But when you when you win, the highlights look a little bit a uh, <laughs> little, little bit better, more exciting. And we got two big wins this week. And um, and a little different ways, too. You know, over the years, uh, our teams jump out and play well, and we get ahead, and, and uh, it seems like we kind of stay ahead and we take everybody's shot. But the, these two games were a little bit different. We got behind, and we had to kind of fight back from behind, and then got behind again and had to fight back. I think we played 85 minutes of basketball, and we're probably, you know, trailed close to... 80 minutes, you know, during the, the the two games, but we ended up with two big wins. So, that's um, th that's a real credit to our players and and to the just the resilience that they've shown. And I, I like I like their resolve. Like I said on uh, on the radio the other night, that uh, I like the way the team feels. And, and even when we come into the the huddles in the timeouts when we're behind, the guys are determined, and and then they've got an attitude to where we're not. We're not defeated. That we can make this happen. We can overcome, and and we finished two the games off, uh, both of them really well, and with great execution on both ends of the floor. I think the last three wins you've had, you finished off on 13 to two, 13 to five, and 18 to four runs at the end of games. Yeah, and that's that, that's the the feel that I think these these guys have as far as what they believe, and they believe in, and and it it, it, it hasn't always been that way. This this has been a. Uh, you know, uh, we've had a lot of challenges, uh, you know, with this group. And, and, but right now, I think we found uh, something that is really special with this team, and hopefully we can just keep winning. All right, let's take a look back at the week that was. And BYU began the weekend in San Diego. Jenny Craig Pavilion, the Cougars, and the Toreros. And uh, the San Diego team, you got them at full speed now. They got their yeah. guys back, and they yeah, did they're, well. they're all healthy, and they, they're coming off a really tough loss. We talked about that loss they had to Pepperdine. Uh, Saturday uh, a week ago, and and they came out with, I mean, just great energy, reminding me of the San Diego State game. The last time we were down there, they were hitting threes. We couldn't get them stopped. We, we you know, they were, shot was off before we got back. You only hit some big threes, you saw there in the first half to kind of keep the score close. Um, and then we made some big plays in the second half. TJ had a tremendous game, you know, career a high, is a big pass. Um, you know, the Zach, Zach's hitting shots here, and there's TJ off a great call, set play, and he catches this thing, and, you know, uh, ready to shoot it, you know, right as he got it. There's a big three by McKay in the second half, and, uh, and we just needed, we needed all these points, you know, we, 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 we caught them late, and we got the thing in overtime. There we were supposed to switch all the screens, and Nick and, T and uh, Yo kind of got caught. And Nick fell down, and Yo kind of tripped on him, and you know that wasn't our best moment of that game by far. But uh, again, our guys come into the huddle in that situation, and it was just all positive. You know, the, we'd been in two overtime games before, and both of them had gone the other way, and they were just determined that we're going to make this happen. And TJ and Yo kind of owned that overtime for us, and 
There's a big shot there by TJ. Yo got two nice looks right around the rim. And a big win for our guys in a, in a really tough uh, environment with a, a really senior-laden team that was ready to win and prepared to win, and we just took it from them. That was the San Diego team starting for seniors. These stats brought to you by Nissan Intelligent Mobility. Now the most exciting tech you own is in your driveway. And, of course, T.J. Haas had the career night on this night. 35 points uh, for T.J. He had 34 just earlier this year. It was another road game. A game you had to have a Pepperdine that he helped you win that night. Yeah, and, and I think that, you know, I mean, T.J.'s got the ball in his hands a lot now. And, and he's, uh, you know, he's assisting the ball and he's, you know, sh scoring the ball really well, getting to the free throw line. We hit 10 threes in that game. And, uh, you know, it's something that, you know, I've always felt like this team is a is a really good shooting team, and it's it's starting to to kind of to show now. You Yo got three of them, which was you know really good for us. And McKay hit a couple. Zach hit, uh, you know, I think he hit one or two, and then TJ got a couple. And when you got a lot of guys shooting the three and spreading the floor pretty well, um, then it opens up a lot of opportunities. And that's where TJ really got a lot of space and got in there and and made a lot of shots at the rim. So. Scored the ball. The balance was pretty good, and uh, and in the overtime it was just Yoli and, and TJ. But uh, we got enough to to pull out the win. Mention the threes in league play. BYU has the number one and number three percentage guys in the conference right now. Some might say, well, it's going to be TJ and Nick. It's it's McKay Cannon and Zach Selius. Right, and yeah. and and that's that's the the kind of you know a lot of people are. What's the difference now than it was maybe you know six weeks ago or two months ago and. And I, you know, I, I usually just kind of, you know, just mull over the, the, the questions and just try to get to the next question. And, <laughs> but in reality, when you look at the top three guys that are playing for us right now and really performing and playing great minutes, three of them out of the top eight weren't even playing basketball last year. You know, two of them was on missions and Nick was, uh, you know, he was trying to find his way a little yeah. bit. and. And it's, it's taken them a little way, a while to find themselves with the other guys. But I think right now, like I said, the, we're, we're playing our best basketball, and it's the best time on any team in any right. season to be able to play, play in your best ball. Let's continue our look back at last week. Uh, from soggy San Diego, it was up the road to L.A. for a Saturday matinee. It's at LMU. BYU playing for the sweep of the Lions. Yeah, we, we got off to kind of a slow start in this game with – and most of it, most of it was on on us. LMU was coming off a tough win, loss off uh, uh, over Gonzaga, and uh, in a game where they, it was a, it was close, it was a two point game with four minutes left. And and uh, but we were just flat footed early. There's, uh, I don't know if I've ever had a player shoot a finger roll and make it. And there's Gav, and Will Chamberlain was one of my you know favorite guys ever when I was a Laker fan living in L.A. And I just thought I'd bring that up because you don't you don't see the, you don't see the finger roll much anymore. And that was Wilt's go-to move back in the day. So uh, Gab got one. Gab played a great game, uh, by the way. He just had a, another one of those. It was six for six from the field and uh, really got us going. They, this is a big team. And they just started the second half here. We, we had a hard time rebounding that thing. But there's a huge, just a great play with Yo catching it, spitting it out to the corner, and Zach hitting it. There's a big play, um, you know, from uh, Gab with a nice spin move. and and dunks it and this here's a big finish you know there's Nick in the corner hit that same exact shot almost at the exact time against Pacific puts you in uh, front and this finally makes it a two possession game and then Zach hits that one straight straight down the gut and then we get a good defensive play on the other end uh, where TJ steps in we get a travel call and that's the game you know and it's uh it's pretty easy to explain how you win sometimes it's hard to explain how you get beat but the way you win is you got guys making big plays, and the guys, uh, you know, did it in that LMU game. So you've been coaching here a while, Coach Rose. Your 14th season. This is the first time ever that you've gone on the road for back-to-back -back games and won both road games by coming back from down double digits in both of them. I told you it seemed kind of weird, you know, at the start of the thing, because it, it's it's different for us because we're. When we get going, we, we usually can put people away and, 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 and you know, we handle all the runs that they, they put. But it's difficult. You spend a lot of energy trying to come back from big deficits. And, and, and in the San Diego game, we were down 14, I think, two or three different times. And the LMU game, we got down 12. And so, uh, uh, like I said, I've, 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 a lot of the things that I say to this team are, 
are, uh, you know, a, a little bit different than the teams in the past because this team's capable of doing things. I think one of the other things that is, is really impressive with this is that both those places have been tough places traditionally for our teams to win. Last year we got beat in both of yeah. those venues. And so um, I think that gives the guys a little bit more resolve to try to make it happen this year, this year especially. And what we did last week, we've got two teams that have to go do that this week. San Francisco goes on the road for two, and St. Mary's goes on the road for two. And this put a little pressure on them. You know, when you go beat, you know, you go get, take your back-to-back -back road trip and you win them both, uh, and you're both, everybody's kind of moving for that, that spot in uh, that, that first round by, or the semifinal by. And so uh, we'll see how they do. San, San Francisco has to come here and then go yeah. to Santa Clara and St. Mary's. I, I think they're, aren't they on the road twice this week? But uh, they've got, uh, they got San Diego, I think, is one of their teams, don't they? Yeah, maybe Pacific, yeah. at yeah. Pacific and at San Diego. Yeah. yeah, so we'll see how they do. And uh, watch us with our split where we play one at home and one on the road. It took care of business last week for certain. Uh, let's look around the league a little bit. There are only two WCC teams, Coach, which have had more than two players of the week this season. Gonzaga is one of the schools, and now BYU is the other because uh, TJ Haas uh, picked up his first career WCC player of the week honor, and that's your third of the season. Yoli has two, now TJ has one, so yeah, BYU's and, got three. And TJ really deserves this. You know, sometimes it's just bad luck. You have great weeks, and someone else had a better week, you know, and... But two big wins on the road. I think the league understands how important those games were to us. Uh, a career-high 35. I think he averaged 24 points a game in the two games and, you know, shot 90% from the free throw line and 50% from the field. So uh, he, uh, he, he, it's a well-deserved award. And, and I'm happy for the guys when that happens. I mean, it's, uh, it brings attention to them and, and their game and kind of just, you know, helps, uh, you know, just justify all the hard work that each of these kids put in, um, you know, to, to, to make their game better. And as well as he does as a shooter and a scorer, as you talked about, I think he has now maybe nine games with seven or more assists in a game right now. Right. And, and, and a lot uh, coming in league. And his turnover, you know, his turnover ratio, Very assist low. to turnover yeah. is one of the best around. And so he's, uh, he's playing his best basketball with the most confidence. And I think that... Uh, I think the, the the feel that he has with his teammates. I, I think that I think he really likes the fact that that he's comfortable out there with Nick. He's played with Nick since he was a kid. Nick's playing, you know, really good ball too. So I I, uh, I like the feel of the group, and I'm happy for Teach. Okay, let's look at the league standings. You mentioned the fact that uh, you take a look at two teams, St. Mary's and San Francisco, heading on the road. They are along with BYU in the top four. And right now we know mathematically BYU cannot drop out of the top four. So the earliest BYU could play in Vegas is that quarterfinal Saturday. But the target is opening up on semifinal Monday, Coach. And right, second. And, and I think that, uh, you know, San Francisco and St. Mary's are obviously the, you know, the two teams that are, are in the mix. And, and um, so that, 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 you know, we got one of them right here on Thursday night with, with San Francisco. So... St. Mary's, we're, we're done with for now, and uh, we'll, we'll kind of just watch what, what happens with them. But we have a chance on Thursday to, you know, to make, make up some ground. And, and uh, I, I, I do believe that we win both of our home games, which is San Francisco, San Diego, yep. then we're going to have enough wins to, to get yep. that Monday night game. So right. that's, that's kind of the message to the guys. We control it, and so let's go see how we can do. Good spot to be in. Well, your day-to-day -day Cougar Sports play-by-play -play is with Spencer Linton and Jerem Jordan on BYU Sports Nation. Join them tomorrow. Show starts at noon Eastern at 10 o'clock Mountain Time on BYU TV and BYU Radio. After the break, Coach Rose previews the week ahead as BYU hosts San Francisco and visits number two Gonzaga. This is BYU Basketball with Dave Rose. Call it a path or a way through. It can be arrow straight or have twists and turns. It's life's financial journey, and Mountain America Credit Union is here to guide you every step of the way. With timely advice and affordable products, this is your journey. Let's begin together. We're Mountain America, guiding you forward. You're watching Super Tuesday on BYU TV, presented by Siegfried and Jensen. This is the champion we've been waiting for. <laughs> This little wiggling worm. Hey. This mucousy little toad. Hey, whoa, whoa, why are the name calling? The spineless tadpole. This sniveling little weakling. Wait, can, can we not do this again? 
Who's the fop doodle now? Gather around for family movie nights on BYU TV as you journey with two women struggling to know their own hearts through love and danger. Don't be mistaken. You're in for a helping of hand slapping, feel good moments watching the acclaimed musical classic Oklahoma. Grab the popcorn and hit the lights for family movie nights all this month on BYU TV. Blue runs deep on BYU TV. Don't miss the BYU Grand Canyon University men's volleyball game live Saturday at 9 Eastern, 7 Mountain. Watch all of your favorite BYU teams on BYU TV, your home for Cougar sports. You know, there are life lessons we're going to take from the moments of struggle and the moments of trial. My first year calling BYU basketball games, uh, the Cougars went 1-25. and Yet those moments that I learned and coaches and players learned in that most difficult season, I think I look back on with some fondness in, in terms of how we persevered at that lowest moment. I really think it's in those moments when you know, maybe things aren't going as well as you'd like, that the leaders of these programs portray their own humanity and share with fans the pain that they feel. Back on BYU Basketball with Dave Rose, presented by Siegfried and Jensen. It is San Francisco coming to town. BYU and the Dons on Thursday at the Marriott Center. And uh, Coach Rose, you're looking to split the season series with uh, Kyle Smith's club. Yeah, we've watched a lot of film of this game right here with our guys, and it wasn't our best game. San Francisco played really well, and they beat us in transition. They beat us in a half court. Um, they beat us at the free throw line. I mean, they, they just... Uh, play better than we did I mean, so we, we've got a, a lot of things that, to improve on uh, I, I think that it, it'll be a really good game I think fans will remember the game in here last year was uh, you know that we, we had a really hard time containing them in here last year and had to have a, a tremendous comeback just to get it to overtime and then we won in overtime but um, I like, I've told you this, you know, all year long how, that I like Kyle's team. I think that his team is similar to ours. They, uh, they share the ball really well. They've got two guys who are kind of their main scorers. They've got um, some pretty good size, um, and, 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 and they, they share the ball really well. Most of their baskets are assisted baskets, and so uh, hopefully our guys – I told the guys today that I think it's really important – that, that we play, we keep the same mindset of how we're playing. We're playing with a lot of trust in each other, and we're playing for each other. I think that we share the ball well, but there's a little bit of revenge factor in this, and I don't want that to be the motivating force of how we play. And uh, hopefully our guys will be able to find a good groove in this game. This will be a, a really competitive game. It should be a fast-paced game. Both teams like to get up and down and score, so I'm looking forward to it. USF coming off a lower scoring, kind of a grinder, had to go to overtime to win at uh, Portland. You know, a really tough challenge, and, and, and fans don't really kind of look at this, but uh, I knew that would be a tough game. I told our guys that I'd hate to be Kyle sitting in that, that, that locker room waiting for that game. He played a really tough game on Thursday night. And then you go up to Portland. Portland hasn't won a game, and they had a bye on Thursday. So they're playing their, their first fresh game of the week against a team that just, you know, really had to put it out there to win a game. And then who expect, you know, no one expects, you know, San Francisco to lose the game, you know. And uh, those, are, those are tough nights. And Portland took them to overtime. Mm -hmm. Frankie hit a big shot, um, you know, to put them up four. And then Portland came back, hit some free throws, got it to overtime. Uh, and then they won it in, in overtime. But uh, I think I don't think anybody thought that game would go to overtime, you know. But uh, it's just amazing how um, games are hard to win. It's hard to win anywhere, anytime. And when you get one, it's pretty special. The league play dynamics is pretty fascinating. And no better example than BYU going up to Gonzaga on Saturday. Once you finish with USF, you go up to the kennel where BYU's won three of the last four meetings and that in and of itself is just an amazing stat that a team would go into Spokane win three in a row which you guys did and now three of the last four and that'll come uh, on the heels of Gonzaga having taken the first of these two games back at your place yeah and, and we'll play better in this game I've, I've got you know we didn't we didn't play our best game here and um, in fact you know it was right after this game where I really felt a, 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 a huge change in our guys, and we haven't lost since we played right. them last time. So, hopefully, that's the case. We go in there, and you know, we're on a six-game winning streak, and um, look, look forward to that game once we get to it. That's the thing is, after that game, you made a, a lineup change that, that paid immediate dividends, and you really looked not—that's not the only reason—but you're kind of looking like a, a different team, right? The feels way different, yeah. I, I, and, I, and I can't—you can't really put your finger on it. Uh, you know, after the season's over, we'll, you know, evaluate everything and try to find what's happening. But the the, the 
the feel of this group right now is is really positive. Not only, you know, in the huddles like I've talked about, but in practice, you know, on the bus, in the airports. I mean, the the, the guys have really got a confident um, a feel to them, and a, and a, a, I think a real belief in our ability to finish this season really strong. One of the real hallmarks of your tenure here at BYU, Coach Rose, is how well this team tends to play. Your teams tend to play in February. And you've got a 5-0 and o month going on so far right now. Yeah. Well, I, you know, it's the character of the kids because the one thing about it is that going into February, you've always got, you know, your challenge. You, you, sometimes our challenge has been that we're, we're trying to protect a lead and win the conference championship. Sometimes the challenge is that we're in second place trying to chase somebody. Sometimes we've been down further in the standings and we're trying to improve our seed for the, the conference tournament. But the one thing that our guys have been really good at is that they'll accept that challenge and, and, and try to improve. And I think that this group is doing it as well as maybe any team we've had. Okay. Friday at uh, 3 o'clock Eastern, listen to the Batcats. BYU baseball on BYU Radio. Cougs in Ohio State in a Corpus Christi on Friday afternoon. Coming up, some Q&A for Coach Rose. This is BYU Basketball with Dave Rose on BYU TV and BYU Radio. BYU Basketball with Dave Rose is brought to you by Siegfried & Jensen, helping Utah families for over 25 years. And by Nissan, innovation that excites. BYU Sports Camps provide youth with opportunities to build confidence, develop courage, learn sportsmanship, and make lifelong friends, all while improving the skills needed for their favorite sport. Athletes will benefit from learning directly from BYU coaches and players what it takes to compete at the highest levels. BYUsportscamps.com has all the information regarding dates, meals, recreation, housing, and other camp details. Get your athlete registered today by visiting BYUsportscamps.com. Luxurious blanket. Getting cozy with family and friends. A gift for everyone. Minky Couture, official luxury blanket of BYU Athletics. Have you ever heard the words Bitcoin, blockchain, cryptocurrency, or Bitcoin mining? Have you wondered what they mean? If so, you might need cryptication. Cryptication is an educational program that will teach you about different cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and Ethereum. You'll learn about the blockchain, the technology behind the coins. We'll show you the difference between a crypto exchange and a crypto wallet. We'll also give you tips on securing your crypto assets. Learn more at Cryptocation.org. Do I have any great stories about the relatives behind the scenes, as it were? Oh, yeah. This cousin looked exactly like his mother, who he had just lost. They pulled each other and looked at each other. They both have tears in their eyes, and he says, to know that we have the same blood running through our veins. And then he just cried. And I just thought, wow, this was our first season. And I thought, we're on to something. Let's go, Coach Lewis, here. Quincy Lewis, assistant men's basketball coach. LeBron James or Michael Jordan? Jordan, easy. Favorite movie, Hoosiers. Bucket list place to go, New Zealand, South Island. Uh, secret talent, kind of weird, I remember numbers. Which staff member still has game? Lee, no, 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 Andrew May. Biggest fear, ooh, biggest fear. Losing to Lee Kamart in anything. Which superpower would I choose? Sorry, Coach. Okay. All right. The Hulk. Whatever the Hulk has, that's what I want. Okay. Teammate I wouldn't mess with. Wow. Daniel Dollar, manager. Okay. Favorite basketball player, Julius Irving, Dr. J. Easy. Most memorable basketball moment, winning state championship with my dad, Tim Fu. Nice work. Nice work. Thanks. Nice work. He's I was going to add a boy you, but that's not right. You remember how to do that? <laughs> what? 
Yeah, that's our, uh, that's our 30 second shot clock yeah. that we decided to use 45 seconds on for Coach Lewis. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes you need a few extra seconds. <laughs> I could tell we were in trouble. He was just kind of moseying through it, you know, yeah. like taking his time. So this is not going to go well. So we, we added time for him. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's good because I, I was, <laughs> the last three or four answers to questions were pretty interesting. Dr. Yeah. J was, was pretty nice. Yeah. His, uh, his best basketball mo moment winning the state championship at Timview High School when his dad was the coach. Right. I coached Quincy at, uh, at Dixie when I was uh, the head coach there. I, in fact, he came when I was the assistant, and then the head coach left. Ken Wagner took the BYU-Hawaii job, and I got the head job at Dixie, and he was a point guard for my first team and my first college team. Quincy Lewis, uh, this week's Shot Clock. Hey, it's time for some Q&A for Coach Rose, and we have uh, here in our studio audience uh, David Hussain, right? Yes, sir. Hello, David. Howdy. You've come a long way to be with us tonight. Tampa, Tell us where Florida. you're from. Tampa, Florida. Tampa, there it is. Go ahead. Uh, coach, uh, during the game, how do you and your assistant coaches divide up roles and responsibilities during the game? Well, I, I think that, uh, you know, this group, is, it's been really smooth. I, I've got a guy on there keeping fouls, and I've got another guy, you know, that's actually watching for defensive matchups and make sure we everybody knows who they're guarding. And then, uh, you know, Quincy and I kind of communicate through the game as far as, um, you know, the lineups and w what's in there. But I... It, the one thing about, you know, I, I, uh, I heard Bill Belichick talk about this when he was going into the, the Super Bowl and they asked him, you know, what, what do you feel when you get the game, when you get to the game and how does all that, you know, everybody just do their job. And if everybody does their job, then we'll be fine. <laughs> and uh, that's kind of how I feel about with our staff. If, if the manager makes sure that he gets the water to everybody, that the guys who take the stools out, we get the stools out in the timeout. Just everybody do their job and we'll be fine. So. I like that approach. Let's go to social media. Thank you for the question, David. Uh, Derek underscore the underscore Irish. We mentioned everybody on Twitter. Uh, he says, Dave, I know the road support is awesome, thanks to BYU Cougar Nation. How do you feel it impacts the home fans and the home team to have their arena turn into kind of a BYU home game for a night? Well, I, you know, I, I really love to have the fans there. And I think it's, uh, it's a, a credit to our, our players and obviously to the university that people are so loyal. And one, one of the great things about coaching here is that people care. And they really care about, uh, you know, our men's basketball team. Uh, there are some times when you feel like maybe that crowd has turned on the other team. Um, this weekend, not, not the case. We had a great crowd at San Diego. And the LMU crowd was as good as any crowd we've ever had when, of we, their when own we were there, of their own. Yeah. It was family weekend, and they had Gonzaga on a Thursday night, and they had us on a Saturday night, and they filled it both nights. But we had a, a pretty vocal group of, of fans right behind us of two or 300 people, and uh, uh, that really encouraged our guys. And so I'm, I'm going to say that 90% of the time that it's, a, um, uh, it's, it's such a, a, a great – advantage for us to have fans just following us and filling up these gyms. So we had the Saturday matinee in L.A., and there was sunshine streaming in, which was nice, because the, the week before, the days before, we were down in San Diego, a lot of rain, got up to L.A., and it was a perfect Southern California Saturday. Oh, uh, it, was, it was so good, the weather on, on Saturday. It made up for the other couple days and the days when we were down there playing Pepperdine. Yeah. It rained the whole time. And, yeah. you know, Yoli got on the bus. I was telling this to my wife. When Yoli got on the bus before the game, and it was sunny, and the guys were kind of standing out by the bus, getting sun on their face, and they walked in, and he only said, uh, it's just too bad Brigham quit, quit walking. He should have just kept walking. <laughs> and if he would have kept walking, we'd be down here. And it all, we're, we're, why can't that be the place? Why can't that be our guy? Yeah, yeah, so. All right, uh, next question from our studio audience. I think we have uh, Nick Boyd at the mic. Is that you, Nick? Yep. Go ahead. All right, my question for you, Coach, is uh, what made you want to start coaching? Well, the truth is, I didn't really think I could do anything else. And uh, I had, a, I, I've told this story before, but I was in line to being an accountant, and I was a county major at the University of Houston. And um, I, I did an internship at uh, Shell Oil Company, and I was on the 42nd floor of the One Shell Plaza for a summer as an intern. And the only two times of the day that I really enjoyed was 12 o'clock and 5 o'clock. <laughs> 12 o'clock was lunch, and 5 o'clock I got to go home. So <laughs> went back to school the next fall, and uh, well, I had a nice conversation with Cheryl, and we talked about maybe coaching, and so we changed, changed my major, and, and that's what we decided to do, and it's, 
it's been good. It's been really good. And, we, I, you know, I started as a high school coach at Millard High School in Fillmore, and I was a junior college coach. And now I've uh, been coaching here for 14 years. So, But I, I really honestly thought that, you know what, I love basketball, and I, I was pretty good at it as a player. So I thought, well, I might, might as well coach. And so that's what made me change. The hours aren't as regular as maybe working for Shell, but uh, it's... Uh, I'll bet you over the 34 years, my wife would really <laughs> like me to, you know, have that Shell Oil Company <laughs> job where I was... She knew I'd... Well, well, if we lived in Houston, she wouldn't like that too much. And, <laughs> and you could never guarantee when you're going to be home because of the traffic, but uh, yeah. the hours in coaching are a little bit different, that's for sure. But either way, you, you made the right call. You I like it. Yeah. I, it was good. Yeah, it's been really good to me. All right, we're taking a break, folks. Uh, Wednesdays at 8 Eastern on BYU Radio, we invite you to get better acquainted with Cougars from both the past and present on Behind the Mic, my weekly hour of in-depth conversations with a bunch of Cougars you hopefully would like to get to know better. Tomorrow night, NFL prospect Sione Taki Taki and Olympic marathoner Jared Ward are my guests. That's tomorrow night, 8 o'clock Eastern on BYU Radio. Coming up after the break, visiting with this man, Colby Lee is our first guest on BYU Basketball with Dave Rose here in Studio C. We're back after this. Living at Trio is not about retirement. It's about fun. It was so different from everything we'd been taught to expect about senior living. I was delighted when we came and they had these raised gardens. Just love it here. I wish more people knew about Trio. Learn more at btrio.com. Are you looking for a better way to deliver results this year? Expanding your product line or building new locations? How about your online presence? Does it need a boost? Maybe you just want to put a little more distance between you and the competition. Tap into the powerful engine of BYU Athletics and let us put together a plan unique to your business. We can provide you with the tools designed to enhance your brand on a local, regional, or national level. We invite your team to join ours. For details, email sponsorship at byu.edu today. Blue runs deep on BYU TV. Don't miss the BYU San Francisco men's basketball game live Thursday at 9 Eastern, 7 Mountain. Watch all of your favorite BYU teams on BYU TV, your home for Cougar Sports. And App Envy. Watch BYU Sports Nation on BYU TV and BYU Radio apps. I didn't think that would go public. <laughs> Welcome back to BYU Basketball with Dave Rose. Well, he's a redshirt freshman from just outside of Boise, Idaho, and he's our first guest on tonight's show. Please welcome in Colby Lee. Yeah. Colby, good to have you. How are you? Good, how are you? Good to see you. All right, I think we're almost through with our Idaho guys this year. Not quite, not quite. I think we're halfway through and coming down to the back half right now. But uh, you are indeed uh, one of the contingent uh, from the Gem State, right? The, the Gem State, all right? Yeah, yeah. So we have our own, uh, we've had our own nicknames for you guys. There are four of you, right? Um, uh, somebody here in the building coined you guys the four spudsmen. And that kind of took off. So there you all are. There we, go. we got the four spudsmen. Oh, wow. It's got a decent ring to it. But uh, some others in the building, myself, thought that the, the potato posse had a better ring to it. Uh, so one of those two is going to have to work for you guys. I'm not sure. Uh, you guys all consider yourselves friends? And had some of you guys already been friends for a while? Yeah, for sure. Me and Rylan grew up together. We played since third grade. So we've known each other for a long time. Um, and then I've heard of McKay. Um, I saw him play for Idaho Select, I'm pretty sure. And I had an assistant coach for my high school team. They kind of knew him a little bit, but I never really played with him or anything like that. And then Connor Harding uh, played against him several times with <laughs> club, high school, 
summer ball. So yeah, we all kind of knew each other before this. So. so so what Connor's doing now, you'd seen before, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So I put you near Boise. Where exactly are you from? I'm from Meridian, which is like five, ten minutes away. Just just outside of Boise. So when so. someone asks where you're from, do you basically say Boise or do you go Meridian and explain it from there? I say Boise and it's like, oh, I'm familiar with that. I'm like, okay, actually I'm from Meridian. So. <laughs> Coach Rose, I remember when you first uh, got a chance to see Colby play? Yeah, you know, we, we followed him for uh, a long time. I mean, he, he was a big kid at a young age, and so those all guys always, you know, kind of catch your eye. But his skill level just continued to improve over the years. And um, it's, it's inter interesting because of our interest in Colby and, and watching Colby um, on, you know, his uh, AAU teams, that's kind of how we found Ryland, you know, in that uh, setting. And then Ryland went off to a prep school and, um, Colby won a state championship his senior year, first time ever in the history of the school, and uh, it was kind of a football school, wasn't it? And, yeah. and, uh, and so the, he, he broke the ice with the, the basketball, and uh, and you know he's he's always kind of been a BYU guy. His mom played at Utah State, and so she was kind of a tough one to, to kind of crack <laughs> in the recruiting process, you know. But uh, um, we're really happy that he decided to come to BYU. Would you come to BYU camps or go to other schools camps, or how'd that work when you were growing up? Yeah, actually, I came to one when I was, uh, I think, a sophomore, mm -hmm. sophomore freshman, and uh, it was a little bit different. A lot of the guys, Tim, Tim took me to the side a couple times and gave me a couple tours, and I kind of got a little special treatment when I was when I was here at the <laughs> the camp. But it, it was pretty cool. Um, definitely had to, uh, I had to check it out because a lot of my buddies, he always came to the BYU camps and said they're really fun. Stay on campus, you get good food. So I was like, yeah, oh, why not, you know? <laughs> what kind of player was your mom? games too, huh? Yeah, oh, yeah, you're, tired. you're tired, you're tired. You're tired, and yeah. it's, a, it's a really good camp, guys. The guys that come love it. Yeah. So Dave mentioned your mom uh, playing hoops at uh, Utah State. Yeah. Uh, what kind of player was she? <laughs> she's a beast, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> she, she's really good. We, I used to, me and my dad always had battles when I was little. Um, but sometimes she would play when she was feeling good and healthy. And she kicked my butt. I'm just like, I'm just like, how is she doing this? Like, I get frustrated. I actually played my sister growing up too, and she, when she beat me, I used to cry and I'd be so mad. But no, my my mom, she's really talented. I think she, I think she still holds the block record at Utah State from her freshman year. Okay. But she only played there one year because it did away with the women's program. Okay. And then she went to Southwest Texas to play. Finish it up. Uh, so you're only a freshman, and, and, and people need to remember you're early in this process here. You've got a long career ahead of you. How would you describe your role right now, and, and what do you ultimately see yourself doing and being here at BYU? Um, well, my role right now, um, you know, I'm kind of on the scout team, uh, which we kind of prepare the other guys for, you know, the games ahead. And it's honestly kind of fun, you know, because we get to, it's tough because I'm in developmental stage, kind of, where um, we have three different jerseys. So red, <laughs> red means you can't shoot. You're a big dude. You just <laughs> all you can do is pretty much little hooks around the rim, right? Yellow jersey, you can drive. You know, you can you can do a little bit more, shoot if you're open. And then green means you get the green light. You can do whatever. Most of the time, I get the red, <laughs> but you know, sometimes I get you know different colored jerseys, so I get a really expand my game and, you know, prepare prepare the guys, but I also get to work on my game as well. So, and Coach Rose, how do you see Colby helping the team right now? Well, it, exactly like he says, he's, he's, uh, he, he's improved his own game. I kind of feel bad for Colby because he's had a, you know, a couple opportunities this year when it was time for him to kind of break through and he had an ankle issue and then he, he got sick and missed a couple practices and kind of got pushed back a little bit. But... Um, and then you know you're playing, you know, playing behind a guy that's playing a lot of minutes. Uh, so I, I look for him to to be a guy that just continues to improve and get better. And and uh, I think his ability to score the ball in the low post is really unique and special. But what's going to really make him a star here is is that he's got a real perimeter game, where uh, you know he was as a sophomore in high school at this this size, almost this size. He's, uh, you know, shooting and making threes, uh, and that's just gotten better and better over the years. So those big guys who can step out are really special, and they, they make teams really hard to beat.
Well, he's only a freshman, so much more to come from you and much more to come on this show as well. Stay where you are. Uh, fresh off a win at number 13, Gonzaga, the BYU women's basketball team led by Conference Player of the Week, Brenna Chase, hosting San Diego Saturday at 4 o'clock Eastern. Watch that game on BYU TV and the BYU TV app. If you're looking for an even more convenient way to shop at Smith's, try Smith's Click List. Order online, pick up curbside by the store. Visit smithsfoodanddrug.com for details. That man, Evan Troy, is coming up next. This is BYU Basketball with Dave Rose here on BYU TV and BYU Radio. If I got hurt and was laid up at home, I wouldn't even think to call a lawyer. What a hassle. I'd want to meet them first. What if I told you that for your first consultation, your lawyer will come to you, home or hospital? Really? Really. They do that? If you've been seriously injured, we'll come to you. It's your job to get better. It's our job to deal with the insurance companies and protect your legal rights. Learn more at SiegfriedandJensen.com. Excited for the reboot. The teaser looks really good. Uh, so Sammy, are these yours? Mom, what are you doing here? Can't a mom just drop in on her special snowflake? No, really, what are you doing here? I'm moving in with your sister to make sure you two eat healthy. We know how to feed ourselves. Mm, just like you know how to decorate. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, I took care of that too. The girls are gonna love it. BYU Meal Plans. Home cooking without mom. You've uh, signed some black players, Don? No? That's right. You want to win, you got to recruit. That's how the big boys do it. Well, yeah, there's seven of them. Seven of the other ones. They're better than us at your game. We need to let us lose. We do not back down here ever. You quit right now? You quit every day the rest of your life. Hey, coach, I can't go no more. You're not going to give it to us. We got to go out there and we got to take it. This is more than just a game now. We are back on BYU Basketball with Dave Rose, presented in part by Smith's. Low prices, market fresh at Smith's. Well, just like last week's player guest, Taylor Mon, guard Evan Troy, has gone from practice player to roster player and now to a guest on The Rose Show. Please welcome in to Studio C, Evan Troy. What's up, Good to see you. How are you? Good to see you. What's up, Ev? Coach. All right, so we had Taylor on last week, kind of warming things up for you. Uh, what's your perspective on the same process that uh, Taylor went through from a guy that gets in as a practice player to a guy that gets on the roster and is one of the guys and road trips and everything else? So I, I think you got to just keep the hope. That's what I would say. Like, you know, after that first year, I was really nervous to play against him, like hearing all the big names like TJ Haas is coming in, Nick Emery's coming back, and then realizing, you know, I can actually play with these dudes, um, kind of just boost your confidence and stuff, and I think that was key to – you know, filling a roster spot the next year. And Coach Rose, kind of recap for fans maybe what the process is if somebody thinks they've got a little bit of game, knowing that they're going to need practice guys, they're going to need, you know, tryout guys, if you will. Yeah, it's, it's kind of been, you know, the football program has a preferred walk-on program, and ours is a little bit different than that. I, I usually have the guys, um, you know, apply to BYU and, and get into BYU on their own, and, and then we'll take that group of guys and try to find two or three that, you know, we can – um, use as far as uh, you know practice players and then some of those guys have gone on you know that's how McKay Cannon came here he came just as a as a walk on and uh, now he's actually you know playing major minutes for us kind of like Craig Cusick and um, some other guys from the past but so it's it's pretty organized from our point of view from the from the outside people wonder how it all works out and and if you ask Ev and he'll be really modest but the, the way you do it is you start playing with the guys and then the guys like how you play, and then you start to compete with them, and then you start beating them. Ev might be go down because he was a pra he was a, a practice player, and, and then this year he's a roster guy. He might go down as the 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 best 
uh, roster player scoring the most baskets in practice than any guy that's ever played here. Because <laughs> he, he just puts buckets on these guys <laughs> and frustrates the heck out of them day in and day out. And this year, kind of a tough run for Ev is that he got mono, you know, in the, right at the end of November or 1st of December or something like that. In finals week. Yeah, yeah knocked him out for about four or five weeks. And, uh, but he's just getting back into you know, shape. I, I told the scout team yesterday, it's as good as any scout team I've mm. ever had on how they push our guys and how they prepare our guys. And there's no question in my mind that the success that our team's having right now is direct result of, you know, Evan Taylor and Colby and Ryland and you know, that whole group. You know? Ev, do you guys take a measure of pride in that, that whole scout team yeah, preparation? Sometimes, you know, like you feel like, what am, what am I even doing to help the team? But like when coach says stuff like that, it really like, you know, hits home because you can get lost in the fray. But when he says stuff like that, you know, I'm actually helping the team and you can kind of see it. S stuff that I might have done in practice. I see my guy did in a game. TJ defends it perfectly. Nick defends yeah. it perfectly. And what's great with Ev is that he'll start yelling at because he knows the scouting report so well. Like we had a yellow shoot of three today early in the shot clock. That's not supposed to happen. OK, and he, he sort of goes. What the heck? You're not supposed to shoot that shot. You're yellow. You don't shoot three. You're still late in the shot clock. So <laughs> they, they, these guys got it down. They know what's going on. Hey, Ev, Colby told us that his mom played college basketball. Mm -hmm. Same thing for you? Uh, yeah, she played a year here as a walk-on as well. Um, and then she decided to call it quits with basketball. But yeah, she played for a year and loved every second of it, I think. Did you ever play her? Yeah, I played her when I was younger. She killed me just like Colby was talking <laughs> about. Like, my dad isn't much of a player, so it was always me and my mom growing up. and. She was taller than me up until probably eighth grade or so. So she just put me in the post and working me. You know, <laughs> in it, the uh, post. Uh, you're from Longview, Washington. Uh, born and raised there or grow up there? How long you lived there? Uh, born in Ohio, Columbus, Ohio. My dad went to school, dental school at Ohio State. So grew up like a, as a Buckeye, I would say. And then uh, moved to Washington, Vancouver first, and then moved up to Longview. And, Is that uh, not too far from Vancouver? Uh, about 45 minutes, okay. pretty close to where Jordan Chapman lived when he used to be here. But how'd you like life in Longview? Love it, L Town for life, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> BYU's on a five-game win streak right now, and it's as well as the Cougs have played at any point this year. Um, what do you think's gone particularly well that has uh, led the team to where it is right now, second place in the WCC? Um, I think our intensity has increased. You know, fighting for a meaning. I feel like in the in the preseason, you know. We we're kind of just going through the motions, kind of just coasting through. And now that we've gotten in league, we realize this is our shot, you know, to make the tournament. And uh, we're putting it on at the right time for sure. Okay. As you're into the USF scout right now and probably prepping as one of those guys, uh, the challenges that USF gives you on Thursday, what would you say? Um, intensity on both offense and defensive end. They're going to come with an edge just because they know that they're fighting for second place along with us. So. That's all I have to. Okay, well, keep prepping them well. Good stuff, Evan. Uh, BYU Sports Nation right now with Kiki Solano is your place for Cougar Sports with a social media twist. In the latest episode, they're celebrating a weekend full of wins all over campus. Check it out on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and IG TV. Coming up after the break, we go three in the key with Evan and Colby and Coach Rose and check in on our Cougars in the pros as well. We're back after this. BYU Basketball with Dave Rose is brought to you by... Siegfried and Jensen, helping Utah families for over 25 years. And by Nissan, innovation that excites. No matter what stage you're at in life, you're always looking to take the next step forward. At Deseret First Credit Union, we want to take each and every next step with you. With low auto loan rates, you can be ready to see what's around every new corner and amazing rates on home mortgages so you can move up to something you've always dreamed of. Deseret First Credit Union, with you every financial step of the way. Membership and eligibility required. Equal housing lender. Hi, Daddy. Hi, sweetie. Check this out. Chicken wings. Have a car wreck? Martin's Collision Repair. The right repair, the right paint, the right choice. Martin's Collision Repair. Today we'll be throwing some fish of our own, random act style.
actually filming like a baking competition segment. You could say we really hooked them today. Uh. You're not the new coach. Are you expecting somebody different? Last time you coached was 12 years ago. I was hired to teach the boys a game of basketball, and I did that to the best of my ability. I play, coach stays, he goes, I go. No school as small has ever been in a state championship. I want to win for my dad. Let's win for coach. You got us here. I love you guys. Team! Welcome back to BYU Basketball with Dave Rose, presented by Siegfried and Jensen. Here's a look at our Cougars and the Pros. Jimmer Fredette scoring a 31. Another just uh, run-of-the-mill night for Jimmer over there in China. See what's happening overseas in Europe. And uh, Kyle Collinsworth, uh, north of the border, is still uh, out uh, nursing that broken foot of his. Those are our Cougars in the Pros. Time now for three in the key. Our two guests tonight, uh, Evan Troy and Colby Lee, along with Coach Rose, will try to answer a few multiple choice questions about a BYU player with the questions posed by that player himself. Tonight, our special guest player is Luke Worthington. Take it away, Lucas. All right, guys. Let's see how well you know me. Question one, what is my favorite NBA team? Favorite NBA team for Luke Worthington. I think we're starting, we're going to start easy and ramp up with this one here. Let's see. Uh, we're going to go with Milwaukee Bucks, Utah Jazz, Sacramento Kings, or Indiana Pacers. Evan, your guess is? It's got to be the Bucks. Colby? Bucks all day. Milwaukee Bucks. Okay, it's clean sweep. They think they know where he's going. And Mr. Wisconsin says? The Bucks. There we go. Which leads us to our second question, which is also uh, geographically based, Luke. Question two, how do you pronounce my hometown? Okay, so he's from Wisconsin, and his hometown is pronounced either Mequon, Mequon, Mequin, or Meekin. It's one of those four is the correct pronunciation. Evan? It's one in the middle two. I'm gonna go Mequon. Okay, Mequon. You go with option number two, is that two, correct? Two, yeah. uh, Colby? I'm gonna go with three. Okay. Mequin. Coach Rose? Well, this isn't fair because I've actually been there and listened to him all talk. <laughs> you should have went first. It's Mequon. He's going number two. Mequon. Let's hear it. Mequon. There it is. So Coach Rose and Evan are both two for two. Yep. Colby's on a one for two, and here we go. Question number three from Luke Worthington. Question three. What was my high school mascot? Okay, now his high school in, in Mequon was Homestead. So it's Homestead High School. They're either the Homestead Homebodies, the Homestead Home Slices, the Homestead Hawks or the Homestead Highlanders, Evan? It's the Highlanders. 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 Coach Rose? I want to say home slices because <laughs> <laughs> that just sounds good, but it's the Highlanders. Okay, we got I two guys. To, I went to a football game. Uh, he's, so. Again, he's got the inside knowledge. We got two guys going for a sweep. Let's hear it from Luke. The Highlanders. All right, there it is. So Evan and Coach Rose, three for three. Colby, respectable, two for three. Well done on three in the key. Good job. All right, uh, let's go to some Q&A for you guys. Uh, first one for Colby from Instagram. Rob Franks asking for Colby Lee, how would you describe your skill set and what you bring to the team? I would say I'm very versatile. Um, I can, my bread and butter is down low for sure. Um, but I also can step out and shoot the three. Um, you have a three this year? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then I feel like I'm just a, physical dude that just likes to work hard and put my head down and go to work. Okay, and for Evan from social media, from Hayden on Facebook, Hayden Wallace, what advice do you have uh, to aspiring BYU basketball players who aren't offered a scholarship but do want to play D1? Uh, just keep at it, that's what I would say. I mean, obviously things didn't go my way right out of high school, but as long as you, you know, stay committed to your craft and just keep on keeping on. Okay, it's been good having you both uh, here tonight and on the team with, as Cougs. Evan, thank you. Colby, thank you. Thanks, Greg. All right, Coach Rose coming back after this. Uh, folks, the number nine BYU men's volleyball team and National Freshman of the Week, Davide Gardini, hosting Grand Canyon Saturday at 9 Eastern on BYU TV and the app. Last week, the guys had the number nine play on SportsCenter's top ten plays. Fun team to watch. And there they are, taking on the Lopes Saturday on BYU TV. As we head to break, we want you to know 
that you can enjoy a full hot breakfast buffet, dinner Monday through Wednesday, a kitchen and large grassy backyard all along the Provo River Trail at the Residence Inn Marriott in Provo. Coach Rose's closing comments coming up next. Stay with us here on BYU TV and BYU Radio. The big moment, championship game, down by two, 10 seconds left. Inbound pass, Johnson's got the ball. In their hearts, your kids have always been champions. It's only a matter of unlocking their potential. So give them a place to dream. A place where every day they can shape themselves into what they can become. He made it! And the crowd goes wild! Champions start here. Sport Court. A hero emerges from obscurity to make a stand against a slumbered evil and bring peace to humanity once and for all. What are you doing? Sorry, hold on a sec. I'm just seeing if the fundraiser is approved. Don't miss Dwight in shining armor. Where's that voice coming from? Premieres this March, only on BYU TV. Blue runs deep on BYU TV. Don't miss the BYU San Diego women's basketball game. Live Saturday at 4 Eastern, 2 Mountain. Watch all of your favorite BYU teams on BYU TV, your home for Cougar Sports. Hey, Lauren. Oh, hey, Smith. So who's your favorite athlete growing up? I know it's going to sound super cliche, but like being one of the few BYU fans in my elementary school, like Ty Detmer was the man. I'm not kidding you. I wanted to be Ty Detmer. To the point where our, like he had like this specific little drop back he did. Like when he took a step back, he'd like bob the ball a little bit. It's like I was doing that as a nine-year-old. I was like, I gotta be Ty Detmer. But I would, you know, do the exact plays that he ran and throw passes to my friends at, at recess at elementary school. Like it was it was a real life thing. That's probably why I choose him as like the athlete I looked up to most when I was a little kid. And I still look up to him now because he's a good person. Welcome back to BYU Basketball with Dave Rose here on BYU TV and BYU Radio. And here is our broadcast schedule for this week. Thursday night, BYU home to San Francisco. It's a BYU TV, BYU Radio broadcast. 7 o'clock East Mountain, 9 o'clock Eastern for the tip. We'll start one hour previous with the pregame on BYU Radio. Then on Saturday, ESPN, the full network for BYU at number two, Gonzaga. BYU looking for its fourth win in the last five tries up there in the kennel. And that'll be an 8 o'clock Mountain Time, 7 o'clock Pacific tip. The game, of course, on BYU Radio as well. Well, Coach, heading into your final two weekends of league play, uh, Zags in a pretty solid spot as they try and uh, secure another conference crown. But uh, there you guys are in, in second place. That's not a bad place to be right now. Yeah, we've been, I mean, a lot of times we got four games left. And, uh, you know, you, 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 you're, you know in, in a two-and-a-half game lead, you think that there's still some things that can happen. But Zags have been pretty consistent, pretty good all uh, the seven years we've been in the league. So the one thing that I'm really concerned about, I'm still trying to figure out, we've, been, we've done a lot of these shows, how did Quincy Lewis get 15 extra seconds? <laughs> just, he just acted like he deserved it. Well, why, wouldn't, why wouldn't the producer, like, make him start over and do it again? Well, the whistle did blow. The whistle did blow, uh, but he. But we did do a second take with it, where he did fit it into 30. But that, so, but that was better. Th this one, I thought, was kind of more. Right, well, that's good. That, yeah. that makes me feel better. Yeah. Because you know, Quincy is a rule follower, and I <laughs> wanted to make sure that uh, he got it all done in 30 seconds. They did ask him off the air, did you know you had to be done in 30 seconds? He was like, what? So yeah. maybe the concept um, maybe didn't quite fully sink gotcha. in, but because uh, he was taking his time, really giving yeah. it some thought, but uh, he did take a second take because he is a rule follower. That makes like me feel said. a lot better. <laughs> Thanks. I appreciate you. That was a good one. That, that, and that's one of our, uh, you know, you keep saying that they could never do it in one take, right? Yeah. So that was one of those guys. Now we know. Now we know. Yeah. Folks, we'd love to see you here next week for BYU Basketball with Dave Rose. Go to BYUCougars.com slash Rose Show to reserve your seats for Coach Rose and Colby and Evan. My name is Greg Rubel. Thanks for being with us on BYU Basketball with Dave Rose. You're on BYU TV and BYU Radio. Good night. Go Cougs. <laughs> Run free, unwind, unravel someplace outside with lots to do. Green trees, red rocks, and don't forget that blue sky. The sunshine, shining, and shine. Oh, and only think I might just stay a while. Say hooray all day because the sun, sun shine on me, sun, sun shine on me, sun's gonna shine on me. Blue runs deep on BYU TV. 
Don't miss the BYU-San Francisco men's basketball game live.